Hey everyone, Adam here. I know it's been a long time coming, but I'm finally going to get around to showing you uh, Linux Mint. So, the version I have loaded up is actually the Cinnamon Edition, Linux Mint 17.2. Uh, I haven't played around with 17.3 yet. Fine, whatever for this. This will be good enough to give you a broad overview of Linux Mint. Now, Linux Mint does come in a few editions. Here we have the Cinnamon Edition, which is what I'm going to show you. And then we have the Mate, or Mate Edition, however that is pronounced. KDE, XFCE, and I think there used to be a Debian Edition, but I'm not too sure about that anymore. Anyway, you can see these are the four major uh, versions uh, of Linux Mint. Now, the main difference is the desktop environments, uh, which I've talked about uh, before in the past, so you should be kind of familiar with the different desktop environments. But what we're going to look at today is Cinnamon. So let's get started. Now, I am running this in a virtual box. I have run this on real hardware uh, a couple of years ago, which I'll talk about my experience with that uh, later in this video. But uh, let's log in here. And this is a fresh install. And uh, you can see how long it takes to boot up. Uh, pretty quick, uh, even in a virtual machine setting. Um, yes, yeah, so this is 17.2, uh, running Cinnamon, the 64-bit edition. Now, one of the very positive things about Linux Mint, uh, the Cinnamon edition, is that people coming from like a Windows background, namely Windows 7 or Windows XP, will pretty much feel at home. Uh, to me, this really reminds me of like a Windows paradigm as far as how you navigate your open windows and how you launch applications and stuff. So, which is a good thing uh, if you just want to get up and running very quickly in a Linux environment as far as learning, not spending a lot of time learning like a tiling window manager, which is completely different to probably anything you've ever used or even Ubuntu Unity. Uh, there is a higher learning curve just navigating around the operating system itself. So. Linux is challenging enough, and when you can kind of make the desktop environment kind of feel a little bit to what you're used to, it just makes the switch that much easier until you get comfortable, in my opinion. So, uh, pretty standard stuff here. You have what would be similar to the start menu uh, in a Windows. Again, I'm kind of referencing this to Windows just because I'm assuming that's what most people are either used to or coming from when deciding which desktop environment that they would like to choose uh, if you're considering switching to Linux. So, um, again, uh, the other versions that I went over, KDE, uh, Mate, LXDE, XFCE, those are very, very similar to a Windows type paradigm as well. However, you don't get some of the added benefits, some of the newer features that I'll show you uh, when compared to Mint's uh, Cinnamon Edition. So what's nice is you can kind of navigate immediately, but then later on when you get a little bit more comfortable, then you can start experimenting with some of the, the, the nicer things that Cinnamon has to offer, uh, which you could not do with an XFCE LXDE type variant. Now, Downside is this is a little bit heavier resource intensive, but honestly with desktops and laptops these days, if your system is two or three years old, you're going to have probably no trouble, or I'm assuming you're going to have very little trouble running this at all, and probably that shouldn't even really be a major consideration. Just run it, you should be fine. So. Uh, you know, it comes with a web browser, Firefox. Again, you know, a lot of this stuff doesn't really matter to me because you can pretty much install whatever uh, browser you want. You can install Chrome, uh, you know, so none of that really matters to me. So what I am going to focus in on are the settings. I believe it's under system settings. Okay. Now, again, I haven't run this in a very long time, so I am a little bit clunky navigating this, but um, I guess this will be good for a, a new user's type perspective. So uh, here you can change your background. So what I like about this is the system settings, there's, a, there's an overview, and this is pretty much where you can change all of your system settings, which is really handy. Um, uh, a lot of the Linux uh, desktop environments now have this. So you can change your background. I'm not a huge fan of the default theme. Um, 
I don't like this gray and green, but again, that's very, very easily fixed, so we're not going to concentrate too much on that. Uh, here you can turn on and off your Windows effects. Now, some of this stuff you may have to log out or uh, and then log back in. Um, I think with this version they tried cleaning a lot of that stuff up, which... Um, you know, in the past, I would change a setting. It didn't look like it took hold, and then all of a sudden, I would log in, back in, and then, oh, okay, then it, then it took kind of hold. So here you can change your fonts, you know, just standard stuff. Um, everything is self-explanatory. Uh, you can change your theme. You can install themes. Very customizable. But unlike KDE, in my opinion, it's not overwhelming. Um, so what I really appreciate about Mint is that a lot of the things that you do want to change or find uh, is smart. Like, I do appreciate with KDE that you can change, like, pretty much anything you can think of. But what I really appreciate about Mint is it, it, is it hones in on those settings and says, okay, instead of changing everything, we're going to try to focus in on the things that we find most important for you that you would probably want to customize. And so what's nice about that is it makes it very, very easy to find those things. So for example, like hot corners, like I find very important. Um, let's see how well this works in my, let's see, show all workspaces. And then here we're going to say uh, show all windows. So now, I don't know how well this will work in a virtual desktop environment. Sometimes this doesn't take hold, uh, which it looks like is not the case now. Um, hover view. Oh, wait. Oh, that's why I didn't enable it. Sorry. That was my fault. Anyway, um, so this does work uh, in a uh, virtual desktop pretty well. So um, as you can see, I find hot corners pretty helpful. And again, this is one of the things, if you're coming from Windows, you're probably not used to and have never heard of. Um, so this is one of these things that you can eventually play around once you get comfortable. But what's nice is everything is laid out and is very easy to find this sort of stuff, unlike KDE, where I would have to dig and dig and dig. And you know, like you may come into system settings under Mint and be like, hot corners, what the heck is a hot corner? And then as you play around with it, I feel it's pretty intuitive to play around with, unlike KDE, where you probably wouldn't even find hot corners, to be honest with you, uh, at least unless you knew you were specifically looking for that. Um, so yeah, I just, I just find this much easier to find the things that you may want to tweak. And I just feel that it's very discoverable, which is kind of nice, especially for new users. So um, you know, again, these are the settings. You can do extensions, I think. You can, let's see, panel settings, panel edit mode, and then maybe I can just try. I'm just trying to get the, the panel up to the, uh, the top. Modify panel. Um, okay, well, I'll look around for that later. Uh, I think it's just, uh, oh, panel here. Always show panel. Auto hide. I was just trying to figure out how to... You can add a new panel, but I just wanted to drag the panel up top. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Or move it to the side? I don't know. Okay, so that is not as intuitive as I was hoping it was going to be. Because um, basically I just wanted to see how quickly I could just, you know, take the panel and slide it up top. Because, uh, you know, for example, I run the awesome Windows Manager and I just prefer my panel sometimes up top as opposed to on the bottom because I've just gotten used to that. But uh, I'm sure it can be done. I just don't know how to do it. And we're not going to waste that much time on that. Here you can, you know, do your startup applications. You can even put a delay, which is kind of nice. So if you have like a lot of startup applications you want to run and you don't want it to just, you know, maybe you want the delay to be like even five minutes, right? Because then uh, you can get into your desktop real quick and then eventually if it's something not critical, then you can uh, have that just come on board uh, much later. So that way you can just get right into the desktop environment itself. So uh, neat features there. Uh, here you can, uh, you know, change a lot of the window behavior. So, like for example, like alt tabbing, um, I don't mind this. Uh, I've gotten used to this with Unity and stuff like that. But, uh, like here you could do window preview. Uh, so that's kind of nice, actually. Um, um, 
let's see if I can change this down to zero. So I just don't like how the delay for the fade out takes a little bit of time, and I don't know how to uh, adjust that quite like that. But that's fine. But you can change to you know your cover flow. I personally don't really like that. But again, it's really nice because it it uh, it gives you uh, options. You know, and in the 3D, you can actually you can see this kind of outlay like this, and then you can just kind of pick the one that you want like this. So actually, that's not too bad. Um, but uh, you know, thumbnails only. However, you want to customize it. So what's really nice is, uh, as I've said, it allows you to customize things, but it really focuses it focuses in on the important things to customize, in my opinion. So um, you can enable snapping. So you know uh, this is pretty standard with Windows 7 if people are used to it. Um, and then you can do corner snapping, which is really nice. So and and this comes out of the box. So and a lot of people I think are used to this from from Windows, right? Like I would just like if I was running Windows, I would just quickly go like this, and I would quickly go like this, and then I would have two applications side by side. Now with a modern twist, then I could quickly use my hot corner and be right back into settings like that. So. Again, that's that's the beauty of of uh, some of these more fancier desktop environments is that you you do have hot corners and stuff which you would not get with Windows, and this this does a great job I think of balancing new features to the old paradigm. So um, yeah, that's that's a very quick overview. The settings are pretty much self-explanatory. You can always. Uh, uh, play around with it yourself. I encourage you to either put this in on a USB, see if you like it, see if this is for you, or run it in a virtual box just to get used to it, and again, see if it's for you. So let me talk about some of the downsides and why I don't run it. This is probably third on my list. I do prefer Unity desktop environment over this, ironically. Uh, I'm probably very, very, uh, I'm probably definitely the minority in that opinion and that assessment. Um, in the past, I felt Cinnamon was a little bit too sluggish. Now, each iteration has gotten better and better and better, and they've kind of worked out the kinks light with that. And to be fair, Unity was the exact same way. So again, as the project matures, things just get better and better and better and faster, So uh, and, and not as sluggish. Um, but to me, sometimes running on real hardware, it just didn't feel as responsive compared to Unity Desktop or uh, especially the awesome Windows Manager, which is tiling which is even more hardcore and we'll get into that in a much later video anyway um, so that that was my main reason why uh, I never ran mints um, plus uh, as far as compatibility um, this is based off of Ubuntu uh, so for as far as compatibility where uh, for example like Steam uh, is only blessed by uh, uh, Ubuntu or they only support Ubuntu 12.04 and 14.04, I believe, and, and some of the higher versions, but it's pretty much Ubuntu is the only thing Steam recognizes, and of course Steam OS. Because this is based upon Ubuntu, you should run into very, very few issues with that. So anything that's available to Debian and Ubuntu should be, for the most part, as of right now, available to Mint application-wise. Uh, however, um, I just don't want to run into those issues. I pretty much run a stock Ubuntu uh, just because I just want to, if it says it's supported, like for example, Steam or a Steam game, I just want to make sure I don't have any issues. I'm just trying to mitigate, mitigate any issues that I may run into. Um, so, but again, that's just my personal opinion. I think Mint is great. You should run into very little issues on that front, but there is a possibility that you could run into issues with that. The other thing that I don't really, uh, that I've gotten used to with uh, Unity and that I really, really like is the HUD, um, which is when you hit Alt, you can search your menus, which I'll, that'll be a future video. I've really gotten used to that. I think that's slick. And the other thing is when I go into this mode, um, I can, uh, like in Unity, I could just type like terminal, like T-E-R, and the terminal application would come to the forefront. Basically, I can filter my applications that are running uh, with the keyboard. So, you know, I could just hit a quick keyboard shortcut. This mode would come up. I would just begin to type. My application would come up. I'd hit enter, and boom, I'd be right into the application. So um, this you can navigate with arrow keys, but uh, typing was just so slick because I wouldn't have to navigate with arrow keys, and plus I could filter it out. So I've gotten used to that with Unity, and I really miss that uh, in Mint. So um, it's just basically those two main features that I really miss in Mint, and that 
uh, just basically gives a slight edge to Unity. Um, and also I felt that, that now with 14.04, Unity is slightly more responsive than the older versions of Cinnamon. Uh, again, your mileage may vary. So um, that's it. That's why I choose what I choose to run. Again, I'm not suggesting, I, I know I'm in the minority with this decision. Um, so, you know, perhaps you would find Mint more to your style and liking. And again, that's why I do these videos. So that way you can kind of get a quick flavor and overview before you actually spend the time uh, uh, running these or, or, you know, at least narrow down your pick, right? It can be very overwhelming. Like even with Mint, there's four versions. If you can get it down to maybe two that you want to try out before you actually do the install, that's going to be a lot more efficient. So that's the purpose of these videos. Hopefully you found that helpful. Um, and that's pretty much it for this. A uh, very quick overview. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.